Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go video. And you've probably seen from some of my previous videos, I've used programs called ALVR and other stuff to be able to play PC VR games like Beat Saber, like VR Chat, all that other sort of stuff. Oh, 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 I'm all catching up. Now, it's always worked quite well, but the Oculus Go only has one controller, so you've only been able to realistically use the one Oculus Go controller that it comes with to be able to sort of play it. Now, Beat Saber, for example, does have a one controller mode, but that's not really the, the full experience now, is it? Now, V-Ridge, which produces a bit of software very similar to ALVR, have now come out with an update that and, a, and an app for your Android phone that turns it into a controller. So it turns it into a 3 DOF controller, so 3 degrees of freedom, just like your Oculus Go one. And now we can play Beat Saber two-handed, baby! Woo! And I missed one because I, I suck. But uh, this isn't a representation of the, how good the game is because I am rubbish at beat sort of rhythm games. But this is how it works. And it looks pretty good in the headset. There's all sorts of settings to kind of stream the sound or improve the quality. And you can even use sort of mouse and keyboard as controllers if you want to. Oh, 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 no, oh, oh, no. Brain fart. Oh, I'm missing them all now. Hundred dollar bills, hundred dollar bills. I'm also tone deaf, so I shouldn't sing along. But this is kind of how it plays, how it works in Beat Saber. It can wirelessly stream to your headset. It can it can stream over USB if you prefer. Uh, it's not free. Riftcat isn't free, so ARVR isn't free. But you do get support, and also you get other features as well. The uh, app itself to add a controller isn't free either. It's about five dollars, um, but and it's only and it's only Android. There's no iOS version yet, but hopefully that sort of thing will come. But this works very well, and I think it's pretty cool. Let's jump in or jump out, and I'll show you how to set it all up. And also stay tuned to the end of the video because I have three copies of the software to give away. So save yourself about twenty dollars and I'll show you how you can win a copy from me later at the end of the video. Right, so how do you set it all up? It's super easy and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So what you need to do on your PC first is go to the website riffcat.com slash VRridge. I'll put links to all these sort of things down below if you need them. Uh, once you're on it, scroll down and check out the minimum requirements. So to get VRidge running, for AMD users, you need a minimum of Windows 8.1. And for NVIDIA users, you need a minimum of Windows 7. So bear that in mind. Make sure your drivers are up to date. That will always be key. Go on the AMD or the NVIDIA website, check your drivers, make sure the latest ones. Do not rely on Windows to automatically update your drivers because sometimes it doesn't include like the entire sort of package includes what the bare minimum is so go on the website grab the latest ones you need at least an i5 you need four gigs of ram and at least a 650 gtx graphics card um, or a 7750 um amd card uh mobile phone app you need android 5.1 or more that's for the kind of um if you use google cardboard or anything like that you need that um, and you need a, a, route, a wireless router. Um, what they do recommend really, and I, I would strongly recommend as well, is a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connect connection. It will just make it so much smoother and so much better. There are better requirements here. Sort of, I would probably aim for these if you can, the recommended. It will just make your experience so much better. What you've got to remember for running PC VR games is your PC itself needs to be able to run the game. So your headset doesn't run the game, the PC does. So if your PC can run Beat Saber and all those sort of things, safe to say that it'd be able to run V-Ridge as well, no issues. Once you've done that, just jump down a little bit more, you can sort of see that V-Ridge does cost money. So the free version gives you 10 minutes per session. So it cuts off every 10 minutes and you have to keep restarting it. Uh, that price is free, so you get to try and test it out, see if you like it, see if, you, see if it works for you uh, at no cost to you. If it does work, you then get for a one-off payment of 14.99 euros it unlocks the entire thing forever so you get all the updates all the changes all everything all the tweaks and whatever all all, all included uh it supports steam vr so that's how you access your your steam library 
so if you've got any VR games on there, that's what you'll be playing. Uh, Oculus Rift support, Google Cardboard support, HTC C Vive, Focus, Gear VR, Oculus Go, and Google Daydream. So all of those headsets can have uh, can play PC VR games with V-Ridge. The additional controllers could either be the new app that's on Android to add a controller, or you can use sort of mouse and keyboard and other stuff. It lets you do that. Um, you can also get technical support. So that's one of the great things about it being paid. Whereas AR VR is free. If you've got any issues with it, it's a community thing. You've got to kind of work together to try and figure it out. With it being paid, there's some support here. So you can email them, support at, uh, I think it's riffcat.com, um, and they will you know, try and help you with any issues you've got. And it includes all future updates, uh, and it's perfect. So to download it, all you need to do is click download. That'll download the program to your PC, click it, run it, start it, and you should be ready to go. What you'll also want to do is jump on the headset of your choice. So depending on what you're installing on, click on the relevant links to get the app for that headset as well. So the apps themselves don't always appear on the store. Some of them do, some of them don't. But Oculus Go, for example, if you click on that, it opens up a separate page and tells you how you can get a key that allows you to download the V-Ridge app for your Oculus Go. So you need the app on your PC and you need the app on your headset. Uh, the link is just here. It takes you into your profile and it gives you a uh, sort of a code. All you need to do is jump onto the Oculus Go website itself and then redeem the key. Tells you how to do it here. Or if you've got the Android app, you can jump into settings on the Android app and bang it in there as well uh, to redeem it. Then once it's in, you'll be able to go to the um, uninstalled apps and install it. So once you've done that, you've got the app installed on your Oculus Go headset, boot that up. It'll then sort of come up with just a blank screen, but don't worry about that because what you then need to do is jump back into RiffCat and it then should appear like this. So in RiffCat, um, it should sort of try and find your device. If it does, it puts it here. Mine's called Pacific. You click yes to connect and then it automatically connects to your Oculus Go, Gear VR, whatever else you're using. If you've got the full version, it'll sort of uh, show its full version here. I did buy this myself. They didn't give me this copy. But as I say, I do have three copies to give away later. And if you don't have the free ver if you do have the free version even, it has like a timer. So it kind of ticks away and you have to kind of uh, use up your time, you know, and keep an eye on it sort of thing. Uh, but once you're all set up, you can go into the configurator. You can change things. As I say, there's things here like um, adding mouse and keyboard support. You can uh, use an Xbox controller as another hand. Uh, so you don't even need to use the mobile app. So if you use an iOS, for example, you can use an Xbox controller or mouse and keyboard or use a mouse or whatever you want to do. Um, and we go to connection. So to get this running, all you need to do is make sure you've got Steam VR installed. So Steam VR installed. If you don't have it at uh, Steam VR itself installed, go into Steam, go to your library, go to add-ons and make sure you've got Steam VR part put in. But if you've got something like Beat Saber already installed, I imagine you've already got it. You just then on your PC, you just need to click, click start or play and then it'll start and V-Ridge is now running and it kind of comes up with some uh, quality settings that you can change on the fly so if you find that you're getting kind of a, a laggy or a pixelated um, sort of um, stream you can kind of bump it down bump it up do what you want to do try to try to tweak it you can also enable sound so you can transfer sound rather from your PC to your headset well it actually does both I think um, but you can obviously just turn the sound off on your PC if you want it to come to your headset so you can play wirelessly stood over wherever you want to do in a bit of space um, without sort of any wires. So as I say, if you want to then add a second controller, automatically it'll add your Oculus Go controller if you use an Oculus Go. But if you want to add a sort of a second controller, what you need to do is on your phone, your Android phone, don't follow my face, just tap in the top there, put in V-Ridge and hit enter. It'll do a little search and then V-Ridge should come up there. Go into that. And don't, don't install that app itself, but scroll down just a little bit and there'll be RiffCat controller. So you see that blue icon there with the little controller on it. Click on that one, install that one. I'll leave links to this down below. Um, but once that's done, just click open. Once you open it, it will look like this and it will search for your desktop. So all you need to do then is just click on your desktop. It automatically then syncs. You can see it says connected. I don't know if that's kind of in focus. Once that's in, that's what the controller kind of looks like. It's got sort of various buttons that kind of match their VR controllers. 
Uh, and what I would say is important is this reset button here. And what that does is essentially the same as the Oculus Go button, where you kind of pre press the, you hold down the home button and it recenters your view. That's what that button does, so it kind of puts you back in. So then all we need to do is just jump into our Oculus Go headset and it has the Steam sort of home on it. All we need to do is just launch our game and we're in. So let's jump back into looking at Beat Saber. So here we go in Beat Saber, you click continue. You can use your Oculus Go controller like a normal one and you can use your phone as the red one. You can, there is an option on the app to switch hands if you wanted sort of the other way around, you could do. Um, if you kind of prefer it, I would say my Note 9 is a little bit big to be uh, a second controller, <laughs> but um, it works, still works quite well. Uh, we can choose any of the options here. What I would suggest is you go in here, I turn no fail off because I just like to play, but turn off obstacles. You still don't have six degrees of freedom to be able to move around and duck stuff. You can kind of move your head side to side to kind of move, but you're not kind of moving too much, so bear that in mind. Uh, you can turn off no bombs, slower songs, all that sort of stuff. You can do all those sort of things, but you can now play the entire experience. So rather than before only having one saber mode, you can now have a dual saber mode. So you get the full sort of experience. And then when you choose any of the tracks, you get all the difficulty settings. So if you choose solo, you only get expert. But to be fair, it's only one, one, thing, one saber, but... At least now you get two sabers and you can play. And just to point out, the uh, reset button, you just press the reset button and it just resets the controller. So it becomes a controller like that. Works really well. What I would say is also you do kind of hold the controller like this. So your phone becomes the sort of wand. I guess in B-Saber it doesn't really matter because it's a saber. But traditionally that's kind of the top of the saber. It would be quite nice if the reset button was the sort of volume button. I think that would kind of help things a little bit. But that's mainly because my sort of, you know, my phone's so big. I've got a Note 9, which is a bit, bit of a chunky one. Now my main tips for making this work correctly is make sure you've got the latest version of all your software. So your drivers for your AMD card or your NVIDIA card, make sure they're up to date. That's one of the biggest things. Make sure that you're on a five gigahertz Wi-Fi network. That would be, that'll make a world of difference in sort of setting this all up. Make sure that you grab the latest version of VRidge, that you grab the latest version of the app on your Oculus Go. Once you've got the app installed on your Oculus Go, it will auto update. So you don't need to worry about that. And before you play, this is probably the biggest one, reboot your PC. Make sure you reboot it so it starts from fresh and you know you only open VRidge first. Open VRidge on your PC. When you hit that play button, it'll automatically open up Steam VR. If you open up Steam VR first, sometimes it can cause a bit of an issue. So open VRidge first, let VRidge itself open Steam VR. Another useful tip is if you find yourself in the floor when you go into Steam VR, uh, run the Steam room setup. So if you click on the little Steam icon in your sort of notification tray, uh, go to sort of Steam VR and run the room setup. Just set it as like that you're standing, that you're not moving around, and sort of set a realistic height and you should get through and it should fix it. You sometimes get that first when you first set it up or you might get an issue when you're actually playing, but if you run that setup, it should help sort sort of any sort of leveling issues you might get. So there we go, that's how you set it all up. Let me know in the comments down below if you've got any questions. I'm super active down there. I will, uh, I'm still answering questions from my AL VR video from like months and months ago. So I'll try and help where I can. The great thing about VRidge is it does have dedicated support. So if you email support at vcat.com, um, you will get hopefully a response. Because uh, obviously you're paying for this. So you do get sort of a bit of a support, whereas AL VR, you don't get any. Uh, the bonus with this as well, it does work with more graphics cards than ALVR. Um, and although I don't have an AMD system, I've been assured that it does work. But uh, let me know what your experience is like. Oh, oh no, I'm so bad at this. The controller does kind of drift a little bit over time, but you just have to make sure you press the little sort of reset button on it. And it works quite well. I'm a living legend, baby. Let me know what you use. Have you tried this app? Have you given it a go? I'll be interested to know. Have you shared any gameplay? I think the gameplay might be a little bit out of sync because of the way I'm recording it. But uh, trust me, in the headset itself, it's perfectly in sync and looks absolutely fine. And so you can just try to change all the sort of settings and improve the quality. And if you've got a better system, a better setup, 
you can kind of set that all up, tweak it to your heart's content. Oh, losing a bit of fuzziness going on, and it's back to core back up again. Obviously, there's lots of things that can interfere with it. Being wireless as well, you might want to use a wire to increase the quality, the st stabilization of the, the quality. Oh, but as I say, let me know what you think. If you want to win a copy on V-Ridge, I've got three copies to give away. All you need to do is on screen now, there'll be a tweet that you just need to tweet. So don't private message me on Twitter. You need to have a Twitter account, tweet this message. Make sure you follow me because that's key because what I would then do is DM you on Twitter to be able to give you the codes and stuff and how to redeem it and all that sort of stuff. So if you want a copy, make sure you tweet me that message before the end of uh, sort of Sunday night, uh, sort of midnight. GMT time, that's when I cut the thing off and then Monday morning I'll announce the winners on Twitter and send you out the codes. Make sure you follow me and tweet that message. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, that's fine, I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it. But do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it and I'll try and do better for next time. Become one of the remarkables, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I next upload a video. And that's me done, I'm out. Have a Sabre high five! Wah.